is your favorite remote work enthusiast, Delilah. In this video, I'm going to discuss my top five tips slash recommendations for being successful in the Arise client certification training, the class that you had to sign up and pay for. And you know, the one where you're going to learn how to service a client, that class, I'm going to teach you how to get through it successfully. And the reason why this is important and why you want to watch this video all the way through is because of a little secret that I'll share with you. And it's not really a secret, but it's just information that you won't find because people are in, are too embarrassed to talk about it. And it is a fact that many people never make it through certification. Yes, many people never make it through the certification class. And there's reasons for this, which we will find out during the course of this video, but just know that there are no guarantees with the rise. Just because you paid your money, that does not mean you are going to make it through certification. And there are different ways that people get eliminated from their certification training and never move on in the next steps. So just make sure you keep that in mind and just know that it is going to take a mental and um, time commitment to be successful getting through the certification training. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I've got like my PowerPoint. It just keeps me on task. But if you haven't already, make sure you watch my videos on Arise. I have a few, but the two that you want to watch before you watch this one are the Arise pros and cons video and the choosing a client video. Those two I will link up here. Make sure you watch those two first before you watch this one because I'll reference things that I already mentioned in those videos and it'll make a lot of stuff just make more sense. We'll be on the same page. So watch those videos first. And if you haven't already, make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and tap the notification bell so you can stay up to date on the latest work from home opportunities. I post every single week hot leads and information that you just don't want to miss out on. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump in. This is all about how to pass the Arai certification training. These are the tips that I highly recommend in order to be successful and to go on in the process and start servicing the client that you chose. Okay, so tip number one show up to class and show up on time. I cannot stress this enough. Your attendance matters. I know my instructor, she would take a moment before we really got into the material for the day and she would take that moment to do a screenshot and she was taking the screenshot because you can see everybody who is in the class and in order to you know keep up with who's showing up and who doesn't she would just take that screenshot at a certain point in time and then we keep it moving and so one of the reasons why people don't make it through certification is because they don't show up your attendance matters and I think you can miss like maybe one class or something don't quote me on that but the goal and what the expectation is is for you to show up to every last class so when you are choosing a client and I discuss this in the video about choosing a client with Arise make sure you are choosing a client that has a training that you can actually attend don't choose a client and think that oh I can make half the class or on Tuesdays it won't really work but I can show up Mm -mm, okay, you need to make sure that you can be there for the entire time beginning to finish from the very first class to the last class before you go ahead and select that client. Otherwise, you run the risk of being um, kicked out of that training because you did not show up. Showing up is half the battle. And then make sure you show up on time. My instructor started class at the very um, 
at the very start of class. Like she was jumping into material and everything right away. And my class was from three to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So she would jump in right at three. She was ready to go and you needed to be there or else you would miss something. So if you were showing up to class at 302 or you know 303 or whatever, you missed a lot of stuff and she wasn't gonna go back and repeat it. So just make sure that you show up to class, you can attend all the classes and you show up on time. And another thing to know, you have to attend class um, on a computer. You have to attend class on a computer, no phones or tablets, and you need a USB headset in order to participate. It is very interactive. Your teacher is going to be talking and you're going to be talking back. They will open up the mics and you will be able to talk and you have to be able to do that in order to participate. So it's not just about showing up and being there. You also have to participate too. And the only way to get the audio um, working is with your USB headset. Now, there is the option to call in on your phone for the audio. So let's say you're on your computer, you're in class, your USB headset goes out. There is a second option to call in with like your cell phone or whatever. And um, you can pick up the audio that way and you can speak that way, but you still have to be attending class on a computer. They will know if you are attending class on your phone or tablet because next to your name will be like a little phone icon so they'll know that you're breaking the rules um i guess the platform is smart enough to know what type of device you're logging in on so just make sure that you are prepared to be at your computer because um you know that's another way people eliminate themselves they aren't following the directions and they're not showing up to class the way you have to show up so no headphones only your usb headset or if you're on the computer, you can um, call in with your phone audio, but those are the only options. So tip number two, take notes. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. If you don't take away anything from these five tips, it is to take notes, okay? And this is so important because your notes are really going to guide you through the homework and the quizzes and ultimately the assessments and i'll talk more about that but just to give you an idea of what kind of notes i took i actually have my notes from my um training so i'm holding up my notes here I'm trying to cover some of the names because you know you're not supposed to share like what the name of the client was but this is <laughs> first of all this is kind of disorganized but not at the same time i have it stapled here because um when i first started the the class i thought that um I don't know I thought it wasn't gonna be that serious and I had like this notebook that had this paper in it but this is three days of notes so you can see on the camera this says day one notes and then this says let me find it this says day three notes okay this is day three notes and this is front and back okay front and back of each sheet of paper this is just three days of notes y'all okay now after i finished that um notebook i went looking around my house and found this notebook this is like a sketch drawing notebook it doesn't have any lines in it but it will, you know, it, it'll do, you know, I thought. So I got um, my notebook and I um, just started taking notes here. And my training was, let me see how many days. We missed some days for holidays, but this was 11 days worth of notes. So this 
combined with this, because like I said, I did a short training and I talk about that in my other video. This is 11 days of notes. I know you really can't see that, but I just wanted to show that to drive home the point that you're gonna have to take a ton of notes. So if you're doing a, a client training that's like a month or a two month long training, just go ahead and buy a fresh notebook that is dedicated to just that client. You don't write anything else in it. And that way all your notes can live in one place and you can easily reference it because you're gonna need to in order to, um, you know, effectively service that client. So just know that you're gonna have to take a lot of notes. And the things that you're gonna wanna take notes on are like the homework. You're gonna wanna take notes on the, um, uh, quizzes you're gonna want to write down the questions and the answers and you're gonna want to make sure you're taking notes during class so the notes from class are gonna help you on the homework and then the homework notes are gonna help you on the quizzes and all of that together is gonna help you on the assessments that you have to take which I will talk more about um, in the next tip but this is really important, not only because you're gonna have to take quizzes and stuff, but because it is a lot of information. And one of the ways to help you retain all that information is by writing it down. So it's gonna help you not only have access to it, but to help it stick by taking the notes down. Because like I said, it's a lot, no matter whether you're doing a quick training or a longer training, you are gonna have to um, learn really fast. So it's a lot of info and you're gonna wanna write it down to help you. And then, like I mentioned, it's gonna help make the homework modules and the quizzes easier, as well as those really, really important assessments. And because you can make service aids. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I wasn't either, but my instructor who had been at Arise for like a decade said she lives by service aids. And basically service aids are like your own like SOP, like standard operating procedures that you put together that you can either have in the form of like sticky notes on your computer or like, you know, have it just on your desk so that you can easily like grab it and flip through. So she was kind enough to make us a few service aids from some of the um, notes that we had in class. Um, she made one for the, uh, for the notes on how to enroll someone because there was like 20 plus steps to do that and that was not going to stick anytime soon so she made a service aid for us to do that and um, I, I would print mine out and I would just kind of have them um, on my desk and service aids really come in handy especially when you're new to servicing the client like once you're through certification and stuff you can easily just grab it or glance at it however you have it set up but it's right there at a glance at a arm's reach because um you know you're gonna go blank sometimes just being honest like when you are on that phone with that customer and they're telling you a million different things and they're asking you to do this that, and the other when you're brand new to the opportunity you're gonna forget stuff and it's just gonna help you not panic if you have the like important info right there printed out already or you know on a sticky note on your computer so your notes are going to help you create those and it yeah, it's going to save you a lot of time going back to the modules because you will have to review all of that stuff so if anything you take away from this just take good notes write down everything and you will be glad that you did because it's gonna save you time later on all right so tip number three do your assignments on time I cannot stress this enough this is extremely important to the process because it is very easy to get behind so just to give you um, an idea of how it works every day you have class, you're also going to have a homework assignment. So you're gonna have to do homework after every class. And this homework takes you anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour and maybe even a little bit longer. It just depends on how fast you take notes and how quickly you digest information. But what I personally did 
was I would do my homework an hour before the start of the next class. So my class was from three to seven. I had other things I needed to do and I just was not interested in sitting down and doing an hour's worth of homework after sitting in class for four hours. I know some people did their homework immediately afterwards. I just didn't have the mental capacity to do it. I would do mine the next day before the start of the next class, which worked very well for me because it would keep me fresh and I would remember what was going on because I'd just done it and I was able to go into the next class, you know, having just come off of doing the assignments. So I would do mine about an hour before the start of my class and sometimes that wasn't enough time to get them done, the assignment. So just know that these assignments aren't going to be super easy. They're going to take, you know, paying attention, writing down lots of notes, and you're going to have to think about those quiz questions because sometimes they are tricky. Now, what you want to avoid at all cost is waiting until the weekend to do your homework, okay? Don't do that because that's where people get behind and that's where people just throw in the towel and say, I've got other stuff going on, I can't finish this, and they get eliminated from the certification. It's too much to do in one sitting. You won't want to do it in one sitting. That's why you want to do it as it is assigned. So just do it as it's assigned, whether it's that night after class or sometime the next day before the next class, but just make sure you're keeping up with your homework assignments and don't wait until the weekend because there is a certain point where all of your homework has to be turned in up to a certain point and if you don't make that cut off you're done another reason why you want to do your assignments on time and this goes back to tip number two with taking really great notes on the homework and the assessments and the quizzes is because you're going to need to take assessments these assessments are required they are 20 questions long and you only get three attempts on these assessments. So I don't know about other client certification trainings. Mine was a very like expedited short one. It was only three weeks long, which does not translate into it being an easy opportunity, which I talk about in my previous video on choosing a client. My assessments, um, I only had two. I only had two assessments. I had one in the very middle of training and then one at the end right before certification. So these were 20 questions long, um, three attempts, and you had to make an 80% or better in order to pass. Now with my notes, these were a breeze. Okay, these were so easy with my notes, but the questions are so tricky that had I not had my notes, I still probably would have done okay, but because the questions were so tricky, they would like mix up information that kind of sounded right, and it's very easy to fail those, even if you have your notes. So you had to make sure that you were taking really great notes to get through those um, assessments. So just make sure that you're taking your notes, you're doing your assignments, and you're taking the notes from the assignments, and you will be able to move forward from those assessments with no problem. If you don't do those things, you are going to have a very hard time with those assessments. And if you don't pass in those three attempts, you're out. So that's another way people end up getting eliminated from the training, and this is completely doable. Just keep up with what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, tip number four, ask questions, all right? You know, you want to make sure if there is anything that you are not clear on that you ask a question about it. Quick story. There was this lady in my training who the instructor was just annoyed with. I, I think it was safe to say everybody in the class was annoyed with. And it wasn't so much that she asked a lot of questions because I asked a lot of questions. I think it was because she would um, ask questions about things that 
you know, we had already discussed and like she's having an aha moment. And like that was 10 minutes ago when we were having that aha moment. And she would just, you know, nitpick at every little thing and ask so many questions and very detailed. And it was just kind of like over overdoing it in a way it seemed. But, you know, now that I've thought about it, I think we could all stand to be a little bit more like that lady in my training. And the reason why I say that is because she was making the instructor teach. And if you've never gone through training before, and even if you have, you know that there are still things that you're going to not be clear on once they've been explained. And you want to be that person who raises your hand and on the on the training, it's through um, Blackboard, you just click a button and it raises your virtual hand. But you wanna make sure you raise that virtual hand and ask your questions and be like that lady in my training because you are going to need to know the ins and outs in order to service that client effectively. And another thing to add, the way a rise in the client um, operate, they expect for you to get everything you need to know and could possibly want to know during this training. They don't want you still being unclear about stuff when you get into that nesting phase. Because if you're still not clear on a lot of stuff and you're in nesting, they're going to say that you aren't ready and you get the boot then. So it's never a free and clear type thing. Like just because you certify and you get to the nesting does not mean that you are going to move on in the process. There are many ways that you can get eliminated from this process. So if there's anything that you don't know 100% forwards and backwards, ask that question. Don't worry about what someone else is thinking because you paid for that training. And at the end of the day, it is going to fall on you to know how to properly service that client. Keep in mind, there are people in line behind you and Arise and the client are not going to say, well, let's work together on getting you up to speed. No, they are going to say after that certification, if you don't know it, you're, you're not going to know it and you got to go. So just make sure you ask those questions. And then make sure that you are um, getting the details. I, I kind of said that, but make sure you're getting the details of different things that could come up. Make sure you're kind of exploring different scenarios that could come up. Because even though you're in the training and they're gonna do their best to cover all bases, there are still things that you're, you're not going to get addressed in class. So that's why it's really important for you once you get access to the knowledge base in your own time to go through the knowledge base and look through those different articles and make sure that you understand what that knowledge base is explaining so that in class you can go to your instructor and ask questions about things you're not clear on. If it is in the knowledge base, you are going to need to know how to do it. That's just the simple way to put it. So after you get access to the knowledge base and you are going through it and there's something that you're not clear on or something that wasn't addressed in class, you bring it up in class and you make that instructor teach it to where you understand it because they are not worried about your success. Even though they say they want you to be successful, the truth is the only person who is worried about your success is you. So you are in charge of your ability to service. Okay, tip number five, practice in the systems, okay? This is so important. Make sure that you are able to do what you're learning in class outside of the class environment. In my opportunity, I had to practice just logging in to everything. I've got my um, sheet of logins still. There's about 10 to 12 logins that I had to um, get familiar with and know which order to do them in just so that I could get into my systems. So just to let you know about mine, we, um, in my opportunity, 
we had to use an ASD and a RISE secure device, which is basically just a computer program that you upload to a flash drive. And when you put that into your computer, it bypasses your computer's normal boot up process and goes straight to the Arise um, computer system or whatever. And this is because you're accessing private secure knowledge. So when you are um, using an ASD, you have to log in to that ASD and then you'd have to go to the um, Arise portal and log in before you could go to the VPN, I believe, and log in. And then there was a two-factor verification that would send to your phone. And then you have to log into Citrix. And once you have logged into Citrix, we had to log into something called Okta. We had to log into the Salesforce knowledge base. We then had to log into the Salesforce um, servicing platform. And then we also had to log into, um, it was this other platform, it was called Lodestar. We had to log into Lodestar and then we had to log into the dialer, like the phone system. That's 10 right there. And I know I'm probably forgetting a couple. So I really wanted to like show the proof that there is a lot of logins that you're going to have to keep up with and steps that you're going to have to take and it took practicing logging in to all of those like I had to practice to just to log into the systems this isn't even actually servicing this is just being able to get to where I can in the system so you're gonna have to practice every element of this and if you are servicing a client and there's like um, a sign up or an enrollment process, you wanna make sure you practice that too. So once I got through all of those systems, it's like Fort Knox, I was able to then practice, you know, doing the enrollment, doing the cancellations, doing the, you know, whatever things I had to do for that opportunity. And you're gonna wanna do this outside of class. Even though you're going to spend a considerable amount of time in class going through these things, you're not going to be able to get it down and confident until you are outside of that classroom environment doing it yourself so that you can see where do I get caught up? Where is it tricky for me? And then um, your classmates are going to want to meet up too. So there are training rooms available in the Blackboard system. That's where you'll um, attend your virtual class. You can meet up with classmates in one of those training rooms. And my classmates, they, they always wanted to meet up during the weekend. I just didn't have the time slash didn't want to. And um, looking back, it would have been really helpful to do it, especially once we were getting into like the more particular type things and like very detail oriented steps we had to do. It would have been nice to have met up with classmates and practice with them. So you're always going to have somebody willing to meet up. And all you have to do is just, you know, mention it before class ends or um, you know just say like hey is there anyone who is interested in meeting up in one of the class the virtual like uh, training rooms so that we can practice this you know maybe like 30 minutes or something you don't want to take up people's time and you don't want your time taken up but it is very helpful to go through that um, outside of like a structured class environment and that is really going to help set you up for success and being able to do it on your own Okay, so there you have it. Those are my top five tips. And just to kind of give my two cents, when I was going through my client certification, I went into it not taking it seriously. Like, just being honest, I went into it thinking this is going to be so easy. I've done customer service before. How hard can it be learning how to answer the phone? And like, how hard can it be to just, you know, do phone work or whatever? And um, I was surprised because <laughs> it wasn't easy. In fact, I learned quickly that it was not going to be a cakewalk and I was going to have to go into class and I was gonna to have to take lots of notes. Y'all saw my notes, it was a lot. And I was gonna to have to pay attention. Like I could not just 
half pay attention while scrolling through like my news feeds or whatever like you really will have to pay attention and I learned that right away so if you go into it already knowing yeah I'm gonna have to like actually work at this it will make it a lot easier to just kind of get in the groove of things and it's not difficult like the, what makes it difficult Okay, it's not difficult, but what makes it kind of difficult is the fact that there's just so much information. It's not anything that you can't grasp. Like I really do sincerely believe just about anyone can learn how to do the stuff. It's just, can you learn how to do it in the timeline that you have? So I took a really quick certification class. I talk about that in my client choosing video, like choosing a client video. My certification class was only three weeks and that didn't mean that it was gonna be easy, which I thought if it was shorter, that meant there wasn't as much to learn. No, if it's shorter, that means there's more to learn in a short period of time. So that's what made mine pretty difficult. And I think even if I had like a month or you know a month and a half, it still would have been challenging just because there's so much information to learn. But I did it and you can do it too. You just gotta go into it and do those different things that I mentioned. So hopefully that was helpful. I thought about all the things that I would do and what I would recommend you know, anyone I know to do. And I know that this probably wasn't everything. So I wanna hear from you all in the comments. I want to hear, you know, what would you recommend for new CSPs to do during the training so that they can be successful? I want to hear your tips. So put them below in the comments and I'll definitely, you know, enjoy reading them and, you know, learning from everyone else. Like, what do you do in your, you know, training? So until next time, I will talk to you all soon. Bye. Hey, before you go, if you are serious about working from home, you're ready to start making money from the comfort of your home or while you travel, whatever your situation might be, then I highly recommend you head on over to my Teachable School and you get my course, How to Find a Remote Job. It is a complete digital course. It's all video and I give you the A to Z on finding and securing your very own remote opportunity. It's 11 lessons, about 127 minutes of training, and I also throw in a cover letter and a resume and these are the same cover letter and resume that I used when I got hired for my remote opportunity and for pretty much all the opportunities that I've ever gotten hired for it works really well and in the course I go over some really key points such as things that you don't want to do on your resume so I talk more about what you don't want to do versus what you do want to do because there's a lot of red flags that are um, brought up when we do certain things on our resume and it could actually disqualify us and we don't even realize we're doing them. So I go over that extensively. I also go over the online interview, which is another really important area. Once you are at that point, it's pretty much you know, you got to deliver and that interview is what's going to seal the deal or it's just going to stop the process right there. So I talk about things that you want to be sure to do, such as what you wear, um, what's going on in the background or what shouldn't be going on in the background, your lighting, all these really like nitty gritty details that we may not even think about that make a huge difference. And then I also talk about what happens once you get hired, things to expect, just so we know what should um, I expect, like what's normal, what's not. And I also talk about making sure you command the most salary so that you can get fairly paid for your remote opportunity. And on the website, I talk more about my story, how I came to working remotely and the course. I go over what led me there, <laughs> it's a lot. And I also um, have reviews from past happy students who have taken the course and have had great success with finding their own remote opportunities. So when you are ready to start working from home, you would just click this big purple button that says, I'm ready to work from home. And you would just uh, be 
head it over to the sales page and you can pay either via credit card or PayPal. And as soon as you submit, you are enrolled in the course and you get instant access to the digital course and you are well on your way to start working from home in your very own remote opportunity. So check out the link in the description box below. Head on over to my Teachable School and I will see you on the inside of the course. Talk soon.